Move over, Garp, because there is a new hockey man in town, and his name is Kobe. One Piece Chapter 1088 has revealed Kobe's insane Conqueror's Hockey Awakening, and it even destroyed what Garp's punch was unable to. But to understand how, we must first jump back to over two years ago, where Garp is giving Helmeppo and the next generation of the Marines their first lesson. He asks them a question. A baby and an old man are stranded on an island full of fierce beasts. You are on a boat that can only hold a maximum of two. What do you do? Kobe, being the naive guy he is, answers that he would get off the boat himself so that the victims can use it to get out. Which leads Garp to scream at Kobe, calling him a dumbass because he should abandon the half-dead geezer instead as the biggest duty of the marine is to safeguard the future generation. That's why every decision a marine makes in their career should reflect this lesson. Because Kobe has way more potential than a Fossil geezer. Now, this lesson embodies all the regret Garp has felt throughout his life. Although he has had his ideals since his days as a youngster, he hasn't been able to further his goals inside the government. The future generation are still being killed in the name of justice, while the useless celestials are protected. The marines cause innocents to die who could further the world like we saw with the scholars in Ohara. The best example of this wasted potential of the future while the old guard do nothing at the top of the marines is the Bridge of Tequila Wolf. This bridge has been under construction for over 700 years through slaves and it can't even reach a single island yet. It's furthering no goal and is only under construction through the whim of the nobles, wasting precious time for the youngsters of each generation to just do this pointless task. In Garp's statement, he is the old man. He sees himself as a good-for-nothing fossil who has run his course in life and failed, but he has hope that his students will be better than him. This causes him to get scolded by the Marines, to never teach that lesson again because all lives are supposed to be equal to them. Just like the lives of Celestials and their slaves, am I right? Uh, <laughs> where is the equality there, huh? He's out of line. But he's right. But Garp responds by saying that the youth's potential is limitless. So technically, all lives aren't equal. This analogy is also a parallel to the situation facing Kobe and Garp in Full Elite Island, where there is an old man in Garp, Kobe, and the rest of the Marines represented by the baby. Only two can go aboard the ship and escape, as one party needs to distract the Blackbeard pirates. This flashback to Garp's lesson is Kobe remembering what he should do. It's his reasoning for a abandoning his closest family and ally in Garp. Remember that Kobe was tasked with capturing Boa Hancock, whose status as a warlord was just revoked. Then, Blackbeard showed up to likely steal her fruit, but luckily, he wet himself and ran away when Rayleigh came to defend the island. Blackbeard doesn't just leave calmly though. He wants to take the marine battleship and the marines on board as hostages with him, which the vice admiral of the fleet can't stop because he doesn't have the clearance to fight a Yonko. However, Kobe gives himself up to Blackbeard so that his 800 crewmen could escape. Vice Admiral Pussycat, I mean, Yamakaze, <laughs> He agrees as Kobe is a member of S.W.O.R.D. and not his own crew. That's how he got captured by Blackbeard. Back to the present though, things are not looking good. The giant hands of Avado Pizarro are about to slam into the battleship, killing everyone. All the pirates are laughing at the marines' unsurmountable situation while Garp gives them a final order that he will create an opening for the three of them. He puts Kobe in charge of destroying the hands, Gruus has to protect the ship from falling debris, and Helmeppo will make sure no pirates will get in their way. However, Kobe is still unsure if he can do it and doubts his ability, but Garp yells at him to never second guess himself in the heat of the battle, which gives all three the push they needed to jump into action. The pirates think there is nothing these three youngsters can do without Garp's help. Kobe has gotten full of himself because of his hero title and he's just a weakling. Even Groose is unsure of Kobe's ability as he technically outranks him so he asks if Kobe got some explosives on him, but he only needs his hands, just like Garp, who finally stands back up to face Kuzan once more. But instead of fighting Kuzan, he dashes past him, with his aim locked at the head of the skull of the island in Pizarro, and hits him with a galaxy divide, which doesn't defeat Pizarro and only angers him even more. But this gives Kobe the crucial opening he needed. Kobe exclaims that compared to Kobe's hands, Pizarro is an ant. If he can't 
break through that, then the blood of all the marines inside the battleship will be on his hands. So Kobe hits him with a conqueror's hockey field on a ski impact, which decimates everything on its way. Turns out that all this time, Kobe was hiding his true strength, even from Garp. Every night after Garp's training, he would sneak off to the battleship bags and start punching relentlessly until his hands bled. Kobe claims that compared to others undergoing Garp's training, he has zero aptitude for combat, which means he needs to work 10 times or even 200 times harder than anyone else. So to protect the ones he loves and cares about, he needs to go through this special training. It makes sense that Kobe would be so behind everyone else. Just two years ago, he was so weak that he couldn't even stand up to Alvida's crew. But with his unrivaled will, he has now over overcome his weakness and gained might. But this strength is of a different caliber. Like Garp's Galaxy Divide only stalled Pizarro for a bit, whereas Kobe was able to smash the island-sized monster into pieces, affecting his real body. Okay, Garp did put a lot of damage into him, but, but still, come on. Come on, countless cannons couldn't even put a scratch on Pizarro's hand, yet Kobe with one single punch destroyed it. Like, th this is a crazy feat. And of course, we also see black lightning emanating from the punch, confirming that although unrefined, Kobe does possess Conqueror's Hockey. This shouldn't really come as a surprise though, because nowadays everyone and their mother has Conqueror's Hockey. Like, you can't even compete in the upper echelons of One Piece without Conquerors. Even if you have advanced armament coding, you will still lose to an advanced Conqueror conqueror's user. This is because your hockey is the manifestation of your will. When using basic hockey, you have control over your will. But conquerors means your will is strong enough to influence others' wills as well. That's why when activating it, weak-willed people start fainting all around. And Kobe might be one of the strongest hockey users of this next generation. Yes, this guy will become him, the true hockey man. Other than Luffy, he has one of the strongest wills in the world. A will so strong that he was able to bring pause to the entire battle at Marineford. When he screamed at Akainu to stop the war so that more marines wouldn't die as the war was already won, he displayed more courage than even Garp, who let his grandson Ace die just moments prior, which he regrets to this day. Imagine you joined the marines as a chore boy just a few months ago, and now you're in the middle of an era-defining war where you are but a mere fly compared to everyone else. But Kobe defied those odds and made people hear him out, which had a hand in convincing Sengoku to call a halt to the war. Okay, of course, Shanks showed up, but Kobe's determination played a part too, okay? Even Kobe's secret punching sessions after the already grueling special training of Garp's is a testament to how strong he could get. Luffy has been going through Garp's training since he was four years old, but it's looking like Kobe in less than three years has gotten to a point where he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Yonko commanders. Like, this kid learned the Rokushiki techniques in just a few months, as we see in his battle against Luffy after Eni's lobby. Remember that CP9 members were trained since they were toddlers to be able to learn these same techniques, but Kobe, wanting to protect what is important to him, has surpassed them. Furthermore, this no hockey training method of Garp seems to be insanely effective. And we have seen this work for Luffy too, where during his stay at Udon Prison, he was bound in sea prison stone cuffs. He couldn't use his fruit abilities and was severely weakened, but after a while, he became stronger because of this. Through his body becoming stronger, his will also powered up. That's how during his fight at the rooftop, his gear 4 modes could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kaido when just a few weeks ago, the same gear 4 got one shot. Maybe that's why Kaido told us that at the top of the world's food chain, fruit powers aren't as effective. It's a battle of hockey. Fruit abilities are gained, not earned. While hockey is the opposite, that's why Logia powers are ineffective against it. This same weakness of gained power is reflected throughout the story, like with Hody Jones and the steroid pills, which gave him a temporary boost in power only for it to be the reason for his demise. Coming back to the chapter though, Garp is laughing in tears while everyone else is shocked at what the hell Kobe just displayed. Groose uses his clay clay fruit powers to create a clay net to capture any debris that are falling down from Honesty Impact. All three boys board the battleship when Garp gives them a final call with the transponder snail. He orders them to sail full speed ahead while he stays back holding off the Blackbeard pirates. But they shouldn't worry because he will figure out a way to survive on his own. Garp's mission to protect the future of the marines was a success. Finally, after a life he sees as full of regret, he was able to succeed in saving his
his new family. Then Kuzan, his former student, stabs him with a ice blade, but let's cut back and revisit every single person Kuzan's ice has killed. So we got Luffy, uh, wait, n n never mind, never mind. Robin! Oh yeah, she's still alive. Uh, uh, you know, Saul, it, it has to be Saul, right? Nope. Oh yeah, Kuzan's ice power is a complete fraud. He is the king of fake out deaths in One Piece, which confirms that Garp is not actually dead. Even the newspaper reports the next day prove this by saying that Garp has disappeared and not perished. Kuzan, of course, can't bring himself to kill his master who taught him his way of justice. The evidence to Kuzan not actually being a real member of the Blackbeard's crew is even present at the start of the chapter through Garp's first lesson. Kuzan literally went through this teaching during the Ohara incident. An old man and a child are stuck in a burning island and you can only save one of them. Guess what Kuzan did? He saved Robin, bringing Garp's lesson to reality. Furthermore, Garp's sentiment of having faith in the future generation and their potential is shown by Kuzan letting Robin and the Straw Hats free after the Ennis Lobby incident. So you mean to tell me that after one single L against Akainu, Kuzan changed his entire perspective on life and the world? Of course not! That's why Garp is still alive. But someone who might not be alive by the end of this arc is Gorosei Saint J. Garcia Saturn and Kizaru, who have landed on Egghead Island, which is being sieged by Emperor Monkey D. Luffy. Egghead Island is about to pop off next chapter because we are guaranteed to have an epic showdown with Gorosei Saturn, who seems to have a mythical bison fruit. This was even hinted at by Oda in a color spread featuring the Straw Hats team, the monkeys, fighting the bisons over an egghead. Now we saw the silhouette of Saturn which looked like a bull and now they are fighting over an egg which represents Egghead Island. Like the bison even has a scar similar to Garcia. This cannot be a coincidence, come on. But what's not a coincidence is you clicking the banger video on screen right now.